friends, this is an intro video to my new upcoming series that I'm going to be doing on homemade cleaning products. I could really go on and on about all the different ways that the cleaning products that we're using are toxic and how bad they are for the environment and how bad they are for our children and pets and our families and things like that. But instead I would rather just post some of those things in the resource section below so that you can go through them on your own time. But many of the studies that I have read, you know, um, over the years that really convinced me to go ahead and start making my own cleaning products uh, were because, you know, they would absorb through our skin as we were using them. You know, the fumes that they were giving off, even when we weren't using them in closed bottles, they were still leaking their fumes um, and things. And even when you're using, especially when you're using them, um, you know, being exposed to that stuff and whatnot. You know, and also um, there was a study I read that said uh, stay at home moms didn't live as long as women who chose to join the workforce because they were exposed to more toxic chemicals while they were in the home because they were cleaning more and things like that. And also because the indoor air, um, the toxin level in our indoor air quality was way higher. I mean, the, the indoor air quality was way lower, um, to put it another way. I hope I'm not confusing you. But the air quality indoors was lower because of all of the cleaning products and things that we use in the home versus the outdoor air. So um, if it's polluting our air, it's leaving residues and things on our surfaces that we're using, we're ingesting it, we're breathing it in, and we're absorbing it, I personally don't think that it's you know, worth having. And there are a lot of different cleaning products out there, whether it's disinfecting sprays, you know, stuff for the bathroom, the toilet bowl, soft scrub, you know, uh, scouring powders, vacuum powders, all these different things, and I'm going to have um, a recipe for every single one of these items. So basically, by the end of the series, hopefully, there will be a video that can help you to replace every single cleaning product that you have in your home. And they're all tried and true. I've been making my own recipe, you know, I'm putting together recipes and trying different ones that I've found from different areas and tweaking them a little as I found they needed tweaked and things like that. Um, and trying them on all sorts of different surfaces, not only cleaning in my own home, but things like my grandparents' house, you know, trying it not only on wood floor, but tile and laminate and countertops that were tile and laminate and things like this. Trying all the different products on all the different surfaces to know how they all work and making sure that they're effective and, you know, that they don't leave behind residues or anything like that. So, um, by the end of the series, hopefully we'll have, you know, a recipe that will replace all of those cleaning products so that we can get rid of all of them, not have to, you know, spend so much on them um, because they are really expensive and making your own can cost a lot less money and they're way better for the environment and they're way, way better for our health. So just real quick, going through some of the um, supplies that you may need during this video series, because this is just an intro video um, to the series. Baking soda is going to be a really big key component in many of the recipes. It's very inexpensive. Um, distilled vinegar, you can, you know, in some of the recipes, I'll go through them all and, you know, basically clarify what can be used in which and whatnot, but either distilled white vinegar or apple cider vinegar, um, and castile soap. These three are probably the main three ingredients in most of the recipes, although, you know, there may be some others as well that you can use in place of them or um, I will recommend in a recipe and things like that. Um, the liquid castile soaps, just make sure that they don't have conditioners, things like um, shea butter or cocoa butter, things like that, because if you use them, then they will leave behind residues and things, and we don't want that. Grain alcohol, also known as vodka, again, not a necessary ingredient. Some of these recipes all give different, you know, ways that you can choose different things and whatnot. Hydrogen peroxide is another good one to use. Uh, borax, 20 mule, te mule team, is very commonly purchased. There is some controversy surrounding borax. It is made from a natural mineral that they mine. And some say that, you know, the mining practices are, you know, messy or whatever, bad for the environment, or it's not sustainably harvested. Please, if you, you know, would like to do your own research on that. Most of the recipes that I will have will either have, you know, it will include it because I do feel like it's, um, you know, worth using. Um, it's way less bad for the environment than many of the other cleaning chemicals and it works very well and since it is a natural product and I don't really use all that much of it, I do choose to use it. But again, you know, feel free to make your own decision on that one. Super washing soda. Sodium bicarbonate is baking soda. Sodium carbonate is 
super washing soda. So they're sort of similar, a little bit different. This on the box does recommend that when you are using it to use gloves. So make sure that any recipe that includes super washing soda, make sure that you do use gloves if you're going to be touching it directly. Most of my recipes, you don't have to touch it directly in any recipe you know, cleaning product that I do use um, where I have to be touching them. I try not to use this stuff in, or actually I don't really. So it's basically um, just a lot like baking soda, only it's like baking soda on steroids. It's like really super strong and tough, um, and it can be maybe a little bit harsh. So in most of the recipes where I use this, I'll also mention that, you know, if you want a uh, more gentle version or whatever, you can replace that with the baking soda. And then as far as some of the equipment that you may need, you know, funnels will be helpful as far as, you know, making some of the sprays and different things. A shaker container can be really helpful for scouring powders and things like that. You can use just reused um, containers like a Parmesan cheese container or something like that also works very well. I've had this one for a really long time and as you can see it's out so I will need to make some more soon. So um, big wide holes are really helpful so that you can, you know, um, shake the the powder onto whatever surface it is that you're going to be using it for. Spray bottles are a big essential. This is my spray bottle for disinfecting spray, my fruit and veggie wash. This is um, an air freshening spray, you know, just different ones. You're probably going to want a different bottle for every single type of spray to be made. And make sure that you um, are labeling them, or if you're the only one who's going to be using them, it may not be quite as important, but Definitely, you know, the main ones and things like that. Make sure people know what they are and so they can be, you know, um, clearly distinguished one from another. A squirt bottle with a little top to it can be useful for, like, soft scrubs and things like that. And um, essential oils. Most of my recipes are going to have these as optional ingredients, but some may not. Um, and then one of the most important things, in my opinion, are paperless towels. Many recipes that I um, use, I only use with cloth paper to, you know, um, cloth uh, cleaning rags. And the main reason for this is because paper is not very good for the environment. It's also, you know, can get a little bit costly to be buying it, using it, throwing it away, buy some more, use it, throw away, buy some more, use it, throw away. Whereas rags, you know, you can use different types. I use rags um, that are reusable. I always have them in my kitchen here um, for cleaning my counters and different surfaces like that. I have smaller ones that I use. These are my paper towels, paperless towels or on paper towels. I don't know what I'm sure, you know, for sure calling them yet, but I use these for other small jobs where I'm just going to use something really quick, you know, wipe up something off the floor or whatever, and then go put it in the laundry. I have a special load that I do where I do just rags by themselves, nothing else. And so um, I do think these are really important to make sure you add. You can use fabric to make a more different type t-shirts or things like that, but I definitely do think that they're important. Um, so other than that, I think I've covered everything. Make sure you check out that resource section below if you're kind of iffy about whether or not you really even want to make your homemade cleaning products, or if you're already sold on the idea, you know, I really hope that you can benefit from my recipes here um, that I've been using for many, many years and I'm very happy with. So um, stay tuned to the video series um, that I'm going to be having coming up the next few weeks. I'm really excited about it. The weather's still very cold outside, and so instead of doing um, the gardening videos and things like that, I'm excited to be doing something a little different while the weather's, you know, not cooperating and do a different aspect of the homesteading lifestyle. So um, thank you for joining me, I'm Frugal Green Girl, and we'll see you next time.